instructions have been clear. I'm going to try and follow uh, what has often been referred to as the B rule of public speaking. Uh, the B rule of public speaking, be brief, be bright, and be gone. Uh, but it's an honor and a privilege to be here uh, with this uh, significant club uh, for the issues that we have to fight today and, of course, the issues that you've been fighting for for such a long period of time with two distinguished colleagues, Councilman uh, Al Van, uh, who is a living legend for all of the things that he has done for Beth Stuyvesant and for our folks all over the years. And my very distinguished colleague, uh, Assemblywoman Annette Robinson, that's a bad sister. She's the chair of banks. <laughs> yeah. uh, and we could have no better person uh, standing up for us uh, in this foreclosure fight uh, than my colleague Annette Robinson. I'm Hakeem Jeffries. For the last uh, five plus years, I've had the opportunity to uh, serve the communities of Fort Greene, Clinton Hill, parts of uh, Crown Heights, the westernmost portion of Beth Stuyvesant and Prospect Heights uh, in the New York State Assembly. And this year, uh, I'm a candidate to represent this community and several communities in the 10th Congressional District. I've got respect for uh, the incumbent. He served in office for the last 30 years, but do think that at this time, uh, at the federal level, for our community, uh, it's time to build upon what has been done uh, to move the community forward. And this is a unique opportunity that we face with a second term Obama presidency that I think we all hope will come to fruition. But when you look at that second term presidency, uh, a black president, a president that's got familiarity with urban communities like Beth Stuyvesant, having come out of representing the South Side of Chicago. But even when we place it in the context of second term Democratic presidencies, I've talked with some of my colleagues, Walter and Rob, about the fact that when you look back over the last 75 years, second term Democratic presidencies have been extremely rare. You had FDR, three and a half terms, he did tremendous things helped get us out of the Great Depression, reform Wall Street, uh, put Social Security in place, uh, moved us through World War II. Wow. But then Truman doesn't run for re-election. Kennedy's assassinated. LBJ doesn't run because of Vietnam. Jimmy Carter loses. And Bill Clinton's got to deal with Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> <laughs> and so we really have to have a meaningful second term Democratic presidency for 75 years. And in this particular instance, we've got a black president. And so it strikes me that if I'm going to be in the arena, now is the time. With all that's happening in this country, the assault on civil rights and women's rights and workers' rights and reproductive rights uh, and immigration rights and the right wing trying to radically redefine what America will become and turn back the hands of time, that it is a moment to have forceful, active leadership representing Bedford Stuyvesant and the other neighborhoods in the 10th Congressional District, now was the time. And so if you give me the chance to go down to Washington, D.C., I'm going to stand up for affordable housing. I'm going to stand up for public education. I'm going to stand up to fight of Medicare and Social Security, stand up against the abuses of the banks, stand up for civil rights, and stand up for our president, Barack Obama. And I'm not asking you to support me based on aspirational things. This is what I hope to do. I want to convince you that I can stand up and be the best possible congressional representative for you, for Vita, for Bedford Stuyvesant, because I've already stood up against powers and principalities that have tried to hold down progress in our community. I stood up against the Hillary Clinton machine as a freshman assembly member and backed then Senator Barack Obama. I stood up against the prison industrial complex, one of the leading champions of the repeal of Rockefeller drug laws, and wrote the law that changed the way that incarcerated individuals are counted for purposes of legislative redistricting so that our folks will no longer be used as political pawns uh, for upstate communities benefiting from the prison population. I stood up 
against Commissioner Kelly on stop and frisk. And I wrote the law uh, that eliminated the electronic stop and frisk database that was being kept on more than a million innocent New Yorkers, the overwhelming majority of whom were black and Latino who came from communities like Bedford-Stuyvesant and who were being subjected to permanent criminal surveillance uh, and suspicion. I stood up against the mayor uh, when he appointed Kathy Black as school chancellor. And I was the lead plaintiff, Jeffries versus Steiner, who sued the State Department of Education uh, and argued that she was unqualified. And I'm glad, uh, with the support of Assemblywoman Robinson, Councilman Van, and, and others throughout this room, that we were able uh, to get the mayor to back down. Uh, because if he didn't, you know, I was prepared to go down the, to the Department of Education and effectuate a citizen's arrest. <laughs> I was going to charge her the crime of impersonating an educator. <laughs> but we got that done, and we got to continue to stand up for the education of our children here in Bedford Stuyvesant. I, I want your support. I need your support. I can win this race uh, on June 26th. It's an accelerated primary to go down to Washington, D.C. and stand up on the issues that I've talked about because I have been standing up for you and for Bedford Stuyvesant and for our community during my five plus years in the New York State Assembly. Thank you for your consideration.